Hey friends, welcome to another episode at Honey Apple Farm. Today I am doing something a little bit different. It's something that I have done only a few times in my life before, but it's something I want to get better at, and that is sewing. So my mom sewed a bunch when I was growing up, very talented. My uh, aunt, I believe, as well, and my grandmother. Oh my gosh, my grandmother made some of the most amazing, I think knitted or crocheted, I forget which. She would make outfits for my Cabbage Patch dolls when I was growing up. I did not pick up the sewing gene, and it's only somewhat recently in the last, well, since moving here, uh, so in the last three years, that I have wanted to pick this up. I have been watching some YouTube channels. My sewing skills are incredibly rudimentary, but one of the things that I would like to work on, it's a project I actually started two years ago and did a big chunk of work on and then didn't finish, was making on paper towels. When we moved here, we were on a mission. I was on a mission. Peter gradually came on board to become a little bit more eco-friendly with how we live. So that meant doing away with a lot of paper products that are not very sustainably sourced and trying to come up with other, uh, you know, using silicon instead of other kind of more non-reusable materials and things like that. And one of the things I wanted to get rid of was paper towels because we went through a lot of them and they're a wasteful product and so I you know unpaper towels are basically a new sexy way of saying kitchen rags except that these are actually a lot nicer than the term rag would apply so if you were around in November you saw the uh, video I did on degreasing our unpaper towels and the other kitchen towels I will put a link to that in the description below if you want to check it out and maybe if I can figure out how to link it here as well but at, at the time I did an original batch of unpaper towels in this kind of really pretty snowflake pattern and then I ordered a second batch of fabric which was this green plaid and I started some and I didn't finish so that's one of the things I'd like to work on this year partly because I want to get back into the sewing and this is about the level of my sewing skills and partly because I don't want this project you know if we end up moving to New York this year or even if we end up moving next year it's something that i want to have as a finished project and not like a you know oh this is one of those half finished projects and put it in the box and hope we get to it later so that's what i'm doing tonight it is probably the last night the christmas tree is up yes our christmas tree is still up yes it is almost the end of january it's a thing so i'm gonna sit here i have a queue of things to listen to uh, in my inbox different podcasts and stuff like that and i'm going to so so let me show you this is the pile. There are five of them left in the pile. And this is, I don't even actually remember what fabric it is. So it's the one side of it is this white diaper cloth. And then the other side of this, gosh, I can't even remember what this is, but I like the pattern. It's pretty without being like in your face ostentatious. And happily, my past self already pinned these. So I cut these all out. I made a pattern out of cardboard and laid this all out on the table and cut them out and I, I pinned them wrong sides together. So what I will do is I will sew along all four sides and leave a corner unsewn so that I can turn it inside out and then I'll go around again and sew them again on the outside and then you know sew the hole shut so they're double sewn. These are not, you can tell, <laughs> they're not precisely measured, but since this inside seam is gonna be inside and nobody's gonna see it, it doesn't matter. I did also, I don't know if you can see, I did also, yeah, you can, I traced the margins up here. I'm not really good with eyeballing things. I'm sure if I do a lot of this construction or sewing or whatever, I'm gonna get better at what dimensions are, but you're supposed to leave a quarter inch seam allowance when you start, and I had to measure it out because there is no way that I was gonna eyeball this. One thing I will say, well, I was following a set of instructions online and they said to wash your fabrics before you put them together. And I did that for the first round. And then for the second round, I thought, nah, that's not necessary. And those, mm, mm. it isn't strictly necessary, but the seams on the fabric that I didn't wash ahead of time, they don't sit flat. They're tight and they're kind of bunchy and they just don't look as nice. They're perfectly functional. So um, yeah, when it says to wash the fabric before you do things, I guess you wash the fabric before you go ahead and sew the garment. It takes me about two hours to do each one of these, so I'm certainly not gonna do all five of them tonight. But if I figure if I can do, you know, one, you know, one two hour stint every, I don't know, month or so, or when the mood takes me, uh, then we'll get to where we wanna go. So 
There is actually <laughs> many methods I have been learning to how you start your fabric. I did take home ec. Home ec existed when I was in school still. I understand it died soon after that, which is fine. So I must have somewhere along the way learned how to do this because we did have a couple of sewing projects. They were the kit sewing projects. You know, everything comes pre-cut and you just sew it together. So I must at some point have learned enough about how to sew or figured it out on my own. And I find this, I find this part of it to be, I don't know. I used to do a lot of puzzles in high school, flat puzzles, uh, 3D puzzles became a thing. My grandparents got me my first 3D puzzle, shaped puzzles, you know, puzzles in the shape of a horse or wolf or something like that. And I liked those because my brain kind of went meditative when I did those. It was looking, visually looking for the pieces I needed to put things together, but it was also free enough to think. And there's something about the repetitive nature of this that I also find satisfying. So this is gonna take me probably about an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you and I will check in with you when this side is done. Okay. So that actually went fairly quickly, or it felt like it went fairly quickly anyway, I didn't quite time it. And I'm all done. So I've gone all the way around and I've left a little gap right here in the corner. It's not quite the three inches, I don't think, recommended in the blog post where I originally read this, but I have gotten better about turning these things inside out with a smaller aperture. And so I tend to make them now a little bit smaller than I need to. I'm very impressed with myself. I only stabbed myself once in the finger while I was sewing. And it's funny, you know, I was, I told you guys that I was going to listen to some podcasts and because it's later at night, I find that this is the time of the night when my brain just kind of wants to shut down. I'm not at all interested in listening to the sound of other people's voices. Because I started sewing and I thought, oh, I'm just gonna sit for a few minutes until I feel like I'm ready to turn on a podcast. And I was never ready. So I've just been sitting here thinking and letting my brain kind of wander. So what I'm doing is I'm sticking my fingers in the aperture and I'm bunching up the fabric. Oh, actually, hold on. Before this, I need to do one thing. I need to cut off the corners because the first time I did this, I thought, surely that doesn't matter. But when you turn this over, you're turning it in on itself. And if you don't cut off the corner, the corner is going to fold over on itself and make an extra lump. And so I need to remember, glad I remembered that, to cut off the corner. It's funny. You know, when you start reading these how-tos, you have a couple of options. You can either follow the instructions exactly, or you can think, surely I can reason through this and do it differently. And sometimes that works. You know, sometimes that's how innovations are made. People think, surely I could do this differently or better. And then you find sometimes that you do actually need to follow the instructions as written. So. I don't mind, you know, I make a conscious choice to choose to try something new and if it doesn't work, then you know that it doesn't work. So I'm just pulling from the far corner through the hole and because the hole is, you know, small, one does this gently. I suppose you all are wondering why I'm not using a sewing machine because this would be a very quick project on a sewing machine. The truth is those home ec classes that I told you about earlier, we did use sewing machines and I have always been very timid around power tools. I don't know why. I've never had a bad experience with them. I've just been always very hesitant to pick them up or use them or approach them in any way. And understandably, because I was in seventh or eighth grade when home ec classes started, my instructors, my teachers, wanted to be sure that we didn't goof off around the sewing machine. And so I remember my home ec teacher telling us this story about some kid who 
I was not paying attention around the sewing machine and the sewing machine needle went straight through their finger. And that, uh, I'm not good with pain. I don't seek out pain. I don't enjoy pain. And that mental image has stayed with me to this day. So I don't believe I have used a sewing machine since those home ec classes. I have done all of my sewing since then by hand. I do understand that if this is something that I want to get into going forward, that I will probably need to learn to use a sewing machine or, you know, just be devoted to hand stitching all the time. But I can see if you do this a lot where the machine will come in handy. So what I'm going to do now, I'm probably going to start here where the aperture is. Let me see if I can show you guys. So yeah, it's gaping here. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this and I'm going to start sewing here. It's already open and I'm going to sew. So there's a, an edge here, right, which is the seam that we folded in. And I'm just going to go over the seam again from the outside to make sure it really lays down and lays flat. Probably if I was doing this really well, I would pin it to get this really nice smooth edge. I'm not going to do it that carefully because it's a towel and I'm just going to kind of press it down with my fingers as I go. A completed unpaper towel. It's so white, you guys. I was telling Peter earlier, he was keeping me company while I sewed this side. I had forgotten how soft and how very white this fabric is when it starts out. So this side took a lot longer and I had forgotten that because this side you can actually see the stitching, whereas the first side that I did, the stitching is all inside. So if it's not quite even, whatever. But since we're gonna be able to see this, see if I can bring it up to the camera here. I mean, it's not machine perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it is more or less even. I did try to keep it somewhat organized. So yeah, but it is very satisfying to make something. And I would really like to get into making other clothing, mostly because quite frankly, a lot of the clothing that's out there that is not a t-shirt, which is 95% of my wardrobe, it's just stuff that I don't like or it's too expensive. And so I think it would be fun to be able to learn how to make my own clothes. That's a long process off. I'm not sure you guys are gonna see much of it this year. Drawing is another one. I would love to learn how to draw at some point, which is also not a skill that comes naturally to me. So don't expect to see a lot more sewing videos, but this is uh, a project that's in my capabilities right now. I have four more of these that are cut and pinned and waiting to be sewn so at least I can keep what rudimentary skills I have current. For now, this will do. Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.